Now that's a beautiful sight, isn't it? So I met my good friends uh, uh, BMW Motorrad Atlanta. I don't know if you can see the sign up there. But um, it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's just turned nine o'clock, 75 degrees. And uh, we're gonna go inside and look at something uh, a bit special that's just been released, the new BMW K1600 inline six bagger. So starting with the front of the bike, visually, it's very similar to the K1600 GT. It's really hard to distinguish. The only uh, factor that might give it away is the B is the lower screen and the more kind of Art Deco style uh, mirror pods. On the left hand side of the bike, uh, it's a little bit more obvious because it's not carrying the GTL's uh, massive uh, top case with backrest or the GT is uh, kind of um, different profile seating and panniers and uh, the whole bike looks that a little bit more slicker, that little bit more kind of uh, cruiser style. From the rear of the bike it's very obvious this is the uh, the new bagger. The uh, vertical uh, LED stop lights look very cool, very much uh, uh, reminiscent of uh, the sort of Harley um, street glide I guess and uh, the um, panniers, uh, I think it would have been a bit nicer if the gloss black was carried over a little bit on the back, uh, perhaps up to the level of the crease. Uh, but it's definitely um, striking the contrast between the gloss black and the matte black finish of the, uh, the unpainted sections. And certainly those big LEDs, there's no mistaking how wide the bike is to um, uh, drivers behind you. And they should see you very clearly when you're actually braking. From the side profile, uh, you get a real good uh, silhouette. And the silhouette is not that different from the uh, Rolling Sands 101 concept. Uh, YouTube that or look that up on the web, Google it. Uh, which this bike is uh, based on. Um, that was a prototype that uh, from RS Designs. And it's a very sweeping silhouette. And if you, if you look at the lines down from the clocks over the over the tank and up this seat and down the back of the bike that's a very flowing line and then there's another again from the kind of midsection of the frontal bodywork over the kind of almost Amiga shapes uh, chassis and then flowing back up again up and over and down the uh, the top cases of the, uh, the the panniers so there's lots of uh, that lovely wavy flowing lines through it and I think uh, when you look at the say the GT uh, GTL K1600 behind it, uh, it may be slightly less practical, um, but it's uh, uh, a much more flowing design, a more beautiful looking line, I think, and uh, the long exhaust kind of help accentuate that, and I think it, it works very well overall. Looking at the details of the bike, obviously, uh, you know, uh, one of the key elements is its um, masterful six cylinder. Uh, in line six, which is kind of cantered at about a forty five degree rake it's a it's a beautiful engine it's it's very it's very very smooth it's got awesome amount of uh, torque i think it's about hundred and thirty torques uh endless horsepower hundred and sixty or so and uh if you've ever ridden one uh if you wind it up it really sounds like an f one car i i really mean that literally it just howls along uh and um I mean that as a compliment, I think it sounds fantastic, but it won't suit everybody, um, it's not going to sound like a, a Ducati or a Harley, um, it will sound more like an inline 4 than a twin, um, but it's not an unpleasant sound, it was, it's quite a pleasant um, kind of droning whistle at, at mid-range and low down revs, it's really in the upper regions where uh, it begins to howl uh, if you start using it uh, in, in anger sort of thing, but it's not really the what the bike's designed for uh, in terms of the mid-range. Uh, you've got massive roll-on grunt. Um, I think 75% of that 130 torques is available at 1500 revs. So you're not going to have to bang it down lots of gears and rev the nuts off the thing to get it to pass cars. And uh, you know, should you uh, be passing a car and something appear over the horizon, you're going to get past it pretty damn quick with this engine. 
Here's an aerial shot, if you like, of uh, of the the clocks and the bars in the tank, and uh, it's a uh, it's a nice uh, nice view overall. They've lowered the uh, the bars, and the bars are much wider, and um, they've got that kind of matte black uh, center line down the tank, which um, contrasts with the gloss of the the bodywork, and back to the matte black again in the dashboard area. Uh, here we see the uh, controls for the stereo system and you've got sort of mode controls and memory and, and so forth. This is standard chrome badging on the side of the bodywork and it's uh, it's really nice. The uh, the B is embossed in a, in a gloss black and uh, the, um, the whole um, chrome element looks really nice against the standard uh, uh, storm black of, uh, of this particular model. Uh, there is uh, additional chrome accessories available as, as extras to stick on the side of the panniers etc if you if you prefer more chrome but obviously this bike is more about um, you know polishing chrome doesn't get you home and so this bike is much more about uh, function than just form although it is a it's quite a pretty looking bike I think there's a, a more close-up of uh, of that logo uh, the uh, K1600 is also embossed and uh, it's just a, a very nice styling element. In the clocks it's standard fare from the K1600, um, it's still analogue and uh, the odometer on the left and the tachometer on the right are, uh, are quite spaced apart. Uh, they're still quite easy to read on the go and then you've got the, uh, the standard uh, idiot lights uh, in the top left and uh, the uh, radio uh, details and the general details of uh, of um, you know engine temperature and your TPMS for your tire pressures and so forth. The big plate at the back with number six on is for the GPS, uh, the optional Garmin unit if you want to buy that, uh, and that will sit in situ there rather than that blanking plate. The uh, long uh, exhausts uh, are very are very large, very kind of Japanese looking in terms of uh, trend and style. Um, and uh, as they come forward um, from the canisters, they move from this chrome uh, finish to a kind of tempered finish. And it's one of the only areas of the bike I'm not so keen on it. I mean, it still looks quality and the fit finish is very good, as you can see from the photos. But that contrast, I'm not sure, really works. I would have liked to have seen it uh, continue with the chrome plating uh, on that particular part of the bike. The uh, more details in terms of um, the foot pegs this time, they've got a real nice feel to them. That um, that rubber is um, is very soft and uh, it's quite bobbly, so um, it, it, you get quite a good grip with your foot on that. There's also the option to have um, little floorboards instead of those as an optional extra if you wish. Uh, but I like the feel of those those uh, standard rubber pegs, and uh, there's a uh, kind of machine grooves in the. Uh, in the front brake lever there and when you sit on it it all feels fine and typical of BMW it always feels the perfect height and the perfect pressure uh, there's no kind of bending your foot up three inches just to feel the brake lever Mr Davison please take note looking at the front of the bike you cannot uh, miss those massive headlights in the car world BMW is known for its uh, beautiful headlights of course and the, the bikes have, uh, are basically gaining that kind of M series if you like look in terms of um, massive lights with LED rings etc and these uh, these particular lights on this model are, uh, are self leveling I believe and full LEDs so uh, should be like daylight at night time on this bike the uh, panel on the left here, the kind of oblong shaped one, uh, you press down on it and it flicks out and that helps open up the, the pannier lid. Um, they're fully lockable and they've also integrated the button there for the heated seat as you can see. The uh, the one circle is for kind of stage one and the two circle is, um, is for the hottest temperature. At the front of the bike the turn signals are full uh, LEDs and it's quite a long strip there. Uh, it's nice because they're tucked out of the way, they're not sticking out on uh, the side of the bike which is very nice uh, um, aesthetically and it's also very nice uh, in terms of aerodynamics. But also those LEDs uh, are pointed to the outside and they are long and quite large so I think they're going to be very bright in actual use. You can also see the uh, spotlights on this particular bike um, beneath the uh, optional um, uh, engine protection guards and also the, uh, the footrest. 
uh, running boards, the highway pegs. I really like the mirror design on this bike. It's uh, beautifully smooth, like a bar of soap. It's a lovely kind of um, almost teardrop shape, uh, really, with very curved edges. It's very aerodynamic. It looks quite custom straight out the crate. Um, the mirrors themselves turn internally just with uh, pr pressing them, the pressure on your finger. So the the mirror pods themselves stay in situ, and the mirrors pivot just like a, a car mirror window uh, mirror basically and uh, it's a really nice custom touch and uh, i would definitely not be t uh, changing those for something else if it were my bike so the uh one thing i did notice is as well as this the sumptuous seat on this bike um there is massive massive grab handles for the pillion and uh, they should feel extremely comfortable holding on to those things they're very high they're very broad there's good room between the seat and the uh the grab handles themselves and also the panniers so uh, even if you're a big guy on the back of that bike with big hands you're going to fit very well and, and it, they also look like uh, they would accommodate straps fairly easily if you wanted to strap something to that rear seat if you were just touring solo the bars are, are particularly nice they they an angle back towards you they're very broad very thick uh, they're nicely painted in thick black paint they look like they would accommodate accessories very easily if you wanted to put it like in a, an X clamp on there for your iPhone or something like that straight in front of you. Um, it's all uh, it's all good basically, and of course they have the spin wheel controller and controls for the uh, the cruise control and heated grips and so forth. Very very nice. Uh, they feel very very relaxing for your arms and you know that you're going to get good leverage on it so um, turning through the twisties should be pretty good compared with other similar cruisers here's the running boards they uh, they fold down um, i found because this particular bike had the low seat height fitted um, and i'm six foot two uh, i found i could do with just a little bit more leg room it would be nice if the uh, if the the running boards were that little bit longer a bit kind of indian style if you like um, and had a little bit more length in them uh, i could live with them quite comfortably but um, i think they'd be kind of perfect if you're really between about um, five six to maybe five nine ten uh, and then from uh, five ten upwards uh, you probably would like them to be a little bit further out and uh, but as I say I could live with those they, and they are quite broad which was very nice so uh, a nice feature to have uh, it's an optional extra and I think it's 200 bucks on this bike another nice touch is the stitching on the um, base of the pillion seat the base of the pillion seat basically acts as a very tiny support for your kind of coccyx area of your backside the seat is very broad and it's very comfortable it's quite firm and i think that's probably a good thing on longer journeys it doesn't doesn't feel kind of the suspension of the seat doesn't feel soft and wallowy it just feels um, fairly accommodating and i think it will be good uh, and that stitching is a, is a very nice custom touch to the the rear seat and again uh, it's not something I, i'd be looking to change in a hurry i doubt so here's a view from uh from the back of the full uh length of the seat and uh you can see the pillion area is very accommodating it's very broad it's very long and uh, again the uh, pillion gets rubberized um, pegs as standard and they can get the uh the kind of short running boards as well uh, so depending on whether you can take a pillion very often or not and whether they favor running boards or pegs you have options there but i would think it's a, a pretty pleasant place to spend a bit of time on the back of uh, of uh, a k1600b uh, i think it's noteworthy that um, i don't think there's any top case available for it and there's no sissy bar uh, either uh, i think um, both would spoil the looks of it to be honest um, and stop it looking that sleek kind of laid back slammed cruiser um, but um, really you, you don't need a sissy bar to uh, feel comfortable on the back of that bike I don't think you've got pretty big strong grab handles and um, in terms of luggage capacity the, the panniers look pretty spacious and particularly if you're touring on your own there's plenty of room to strap a big bag to the back of that seat without damaging the uh, the cases or the grab handles one really nice touch to see is the um, is the uh, tyre valve inserted into the wheel rim itself 
So you can see there that um, in terms of getting the, uh, the tyre gauge on it or uh, you know pumping up your tyres is going to be a hell of a lot easier uh, with that side uh, tyre valve. Front wheel is a, is a 120, I think the rear, rear is a 180, uh, I'm not sure about that, I know it's a 6 inch rim, so in theory it should accommodate a 180 to 200 section, but I think it's a 180, the front is a 120 and they're both 17 inches, so I'm expecting uh, uh, excellent handling um, for a bike in this, uh, in this segment with that type of uh, tyre and wheel fitment. So let's run through the basic spec of the bike. Um, the bike is, uh, well it's a water-cooled inline 6 obviously and displacement is 649cc uh, I think that's about 100 cubic inch if you work in that uh, it's 160 horsepower uh, about 7.7 7. um, it uh, takes a 7 gallon has a 7 gallon uh, US gallon fuel tank which is huge the only bikes I can think of with a bigger tank than that is uh, the Ducati uh, Multistrada Enduro and uh, the BMW R1200 GS Adventure uh, at 8 gallon. So 7 gallon should get you, um, I don't know, probably, uh, probably about 300 miles on this bike. So uh, pretty good. Um, clutch is, uh, is a very, very lightweight multi-disc uh, hydraulic actuation uh, uh, clutch in, a, in an all bath. Um, integral ABS is standard. You've got four piston calipers up front, two at the rear. The uh, the wheels, as I mentioned, are, are 17 inches. They're uh, they're cast aluminum. The seat height is 30.7 inches, I believe. Uh, the seat on this particular model is slightly less than that. I'm not sure of the height, but it was very very low. Um, very easy to get on. Recently, I sat on a on a Charlie's uh, Ultra and Ed's. Um, Indian Roadmaster and they are mammothly heavy to get off the side stand um, and uh, this bike felt a little bit lower and it also carried its weight much lower it was a lot easier to get off the side stand and felt much lighter than those bikes it's still not a light bike I think uh, we're still talking 740 pounds um, and um, I think that's probably excluding the accessories and options but um, you know, it's still probably a couple hundred pounds lighter than those big uh, behemoths, and um, you've got significantly more power at 160 horsepower and significantly more torque at uh, 120, uh, 20, 29 uh, pound per feet of torque, I think, on this particular bike. So, um, I'm expecting it to kind of run rings around most uh, heavyweight cruisers, basically, touring cruisers. Now, this particular bike comes in Black Storm Metallic. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's the only colour available for 2017, and uh, this one has the Safety Plus package, which is adaptive headlights, tire pressure monitors, etc. Got floorboards there, a couple hundred bucks. It's got ABS Pro premium package which gives you electronic suspension and cruise control and heated grips and yada yada uh, it's got the uh, touring package it's got dynamic electronic stability um, oh sorry ESA which is electronic um, suspension adjustment basically and you can kind of go from soft to to hard and every day and the same with the riding modes in terms of kind of uh, soft and uh, medium and uh, aggressive and uh, this one's got the engine protection bars as well they're a couple hundred bucks and um, the bottom line is this one as a suggested retail price is $24,885 so uh, not cheap but you are getting serious serious motorcycle here with a serious amount of equipment um, hugely powerful beautifully made um, you've got that sexy six cylinder engine you've got highway pegs you've got cruise control you've got heated grips you've got heated seats you've got the panniers uh, I mean you've got the, uh, an audio system standard with the packing uh, really good uh, good radio 
Uh, it's already pre-wired for the, the Garmin uh, GPS. You've got an electric windscreen. You've got great tyres and wheels. You've got ABS brakes. You've got traction control, electronic suspension. I mean, uh, it's a serious, serious bike. There's no doubt about that. And it looks fantastic uh, as well. Um, of course, for maybe another three grand or so, for argument's sake, you could get Harley Davidson Street Glide. And I would say that if you like cruising at the speed limit or below everywhere and um, perhaps uh, you want to really enjoy a big social scene with Harley Davidson, you have a local Harley dealer and you have friends who ride Harleys then you know the Street Glide would be a very good choice. I would definitely go for a Milwaukee 8 over a, a Twin Cam uh, 88, 96 or 103, go for that 107, uh, don't get, go for the CVO 110 either, I don't think really the twin cams are particularly reliable in my personal opinion, particularly above about 20,000 miles, but the Milwaukee 8 um, I think uh, will, will be reliable and I think uh, it's a good option if you want those things. Also for that kind of money, if you're not a, a, a brand snob for want of a better expression, the new Yamaha Venture uh, Transcontinental is coming out and that has a lot of cool features on it such as um, forward and reverse uh, uh, gear at a standstill um, uh, for, to get you in and out of parking spaces it's got a cool uh, intercom music system so you know your pillion can be listening to music while you're making a phone call for instance and it's got a really big V-twin engine making a lot of torque and uh, if you really must have a V-twin cruiser, uh, but you're not brand snobby, you're not worried about the social scene, it's just for you or you and your partner, I think that's going to be a very good option as well, at that kind of money. But if you, uh, you know, if you want uh, build quality, reliability, great dealers, you're securing the person you are, you don't need the, the friends you have or, or the ones you want, and... Uh, you know, you tend to ride more on your own and, uh, you know, for longer rides and stuff, then uh, I think uh, the BMW K1600B is a very, very good option. Uh, if you really want uh, something that is, uh, is a really good cruiser and is also a really good tourer, but is not much of a compromise of either, then I think it's, uh, it's a winner. And I think if you like, uh, you know, you value smoothness and uh, long service intervals and big tank range, then uh, I think it could be a very good option for you. And I would urge you to go and see it in the flesh at your local BMW dealer. And if you're lucky enough to get a demo, absolutely ride it. And I think you will love it. And uh, one USP it has over most other bikes other than the forthcoming uh, Yamaha is that it has a uh, reverse gear and uh, that's really useful on a bike any heavy bike basically even if it's just when you're trying to get it out your uh, your uh, garage or when you've parked somewhere and you didn't realize that uh, it's actually at quite a steep camber and stuff uh, it's really nice just being able to uh, just press that button and uh, hear the motor push it back in a, a electric style at a, a, a low low kind of uh, pace to get you out of uh, parking spaces before you ride off again so that's a really nice usp and uh, if it were me and my money uh, i don't like the k1600 gtl i think it's a bit too big and heavy and too top heavy with the, all the top cases and stuff uh, the GT is very, very fast, but it kind of encourages me to ride it a bit too fast for a bike that's quite long and uh, quite heavy. So I prefer things that um, uh, turn up that little bit easier. And I think uh, it's in the right home in the bagger. For me, if I was buying a K1600, I would definitely buy the bagger. I think it's uh, the way in which they've set it up, the way in which it looks, and the nature of that engine. I think it's found its natural home. And uh, personally, I can't wait to, to ride one in person. And when I do, I'll give you my, uh, my feedback on that. Anyway, take care. Uh, ride often, ride safely, ride on.